Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to the wonderful world of AutoLine Daily. It's Wednesday, July 18th, 2012. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John, who's out today. So let's get to it. As the world introduces its greatest athletes, GM will introduce its latest offering from Cadillac. The ATS sedan will premiere with as many as nine 30-second ads, plus another one-minute spot during the Olympic opening ceremony. The ads show the car on a worldwide adventure seeking out challenging roads across several continents. I've seen it and it's good stuff, featuring excellent work by my old pal Jeff Swart. Last week, PSA, the parent company of Peugeot and Citroën, announced it will shut down a plant in France and a move to restructure the company. Now the French government says the company needs to make concessions if it's going to receive aid from the government. According to Reuters, France is preparing a stimulus for the auto industry but wants companies to make concessions like suspending dividends to get the aid. The plan is expected to be unveiled at the end of the month. And speaking of labor issues, Ford says it is looking to cut wages in Canada. According to the Detroit News, the company says labor costs in Canada are the highest out of any country it does business. The average employee makes $34 an hour compared to $28 in the U.S. A strong Canadian dollar is making it more expensive to build cars in the country, and Ford will also cut 440 jobs, or about 15% of its workforce, in Australia. And it will also cut production in the country by nearly 30% because demand for the Falcon is declining. Yesterday, we reported that Toyota won't offer a four-cylinder for the 2013 Sienna. Now, Volkswagen is dropping the 2.5-liter five-cylinder from its Jetta lineup in favor of a 1.8 liter turbo four. The move comes as Germany's largest automaker seeks to improve fuel economy and performance in its base level Jettas. The new 1.8 liter turbo engine will be built in Salao, Mexico. Sound the alarm, you know things are bad in Europe when the world's greatest road racing circuit, the fabulous Nürburgring, is in financial distress. The track is estimated to need 13 million euros worth of investment to stay afloat, otherwise it will likely enter bankruptcy at the end of the month. The track needs the money to pay back a nearly 300 million euro loan it received in 2009, according to the UK's Guardian newspaper. Coming up next, a few of my thoughts on why GM needs a museum to properly showcase the company's heritage. We'll be right back after this. You know why I pulled you over, ma'am? I need you to recalibrate the Doppler shift on the return signal. Radar's on the frisk. Do Sonata drivers know something you don't? The Sonata from Hyundai. There are some great automotive destinations in the world. Volkswagen has Autostadt in its hometown of Wolfsburg, a theme park devoted to everything VW. And you can even take delivery of a car while you're at it. Audi, BMW, Porsche, and Mercedes-Benz have stunning museums awash in the history of their respective brands. Ford is affiliated with one of the most important historical museums in the world, and there's even a modest museum dedicated to the product history of Chrysler in Auburn Hills. Are some of these museums over the top? Absolutely. But these manufacturers rightly see these kinds of structures as part of their continued brand building, and they're absolutely right to think that way. But GM, the number one or number two automaker in the world, depending on what day it is, has an 81,000 square foot warehouse in Sterling Heights, Michigan, called the GM Heritage Center, where it keeps a smattering of its most important cars, and it's not even open to the public on a regular basis. Now granted, the very last thing on CEO Dan Ackerson's to-do list is funding a museum for General Motors, so the likelihood of GM spending $100 million on a museum is, well, it's just never going to happen. Because the reality for Ackerson and his troops is that they're operating in a 24-7, 
all hands on deck frenzy, developing competitive products, putting out fires, trying to move the sales needle, cutting costs, trying to maintain momentum in China, trying to grow business in new markets, etc. all the while waiting impatiently to get out from under the tainted moniker of government motors that no one wants to hear about anymore down at the Rensen. But, and this is a very big but, despite GM's swirling maelstrom of problems and challenges, the fact that it doesn't have a proper museum is bordering on the criminal. I get that under Dan Ackerson, GM is more about cost cutting than brand building. And for the very short term, maybe he's right. But there's a bigger long-term issue at stake here. And if Ackerson wants his legacy to be one of other than the guy who was there after GM emerged from bankruptcy, then maybe he ought to heed history or at least acknowledge its importance to the company and put plans in motion to build a proper museum to showcase GM's glorious past, ever-changing present, and promising future. And it just might have the beneficial side effect of convincing people that GM is so much more than a faceless enterprise, an iconic American company filled with colorful stories, true believers, imaginative solutions, and flat-out creativity that once dominated the business and set the standard for future generations. And that's the high-octane truth for this week. But before I go, I want to remind you to join us for AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. John and I are going to be chatting with Joel Iwanek, the head of all marketing and advertising at General Motors. This is going to be a great show, folks. So tune in this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for some of the best insider discussion in the automotive business. Anyway, that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.